virus uh, has spread into 60 different countries at this time. And so the Lord uh, told me that we need a special prayer for our four men from this congregation and John Icorn going from another congregation over to other countries. And so I've asked our, our pastor this morning if he would offer that special prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, Lord, even now as we come before Thee, it is with gratefulness, it is with hope, and it is with faith in Thee. We are grateful, Lord, for the blessings that You have poured out upon us, how You have guided us, protected us, and provided for each and every one of our needs. It is with great hope that we send men into other areas of the world for them to spread the gospel story. And it is with faith in Thee that we trust that they will be cared for. And so, Lord, we lift them up unto you at this time, asking a special blessing upon them. That as the creator of the, all the earth and everything upon it, recognizing that you know what is going on, you know the dangers that lie before them, you know the obstacles that they will face, and everything that they will encounter, Lord, we trust in Thee and we ask Thee that You would protect them, that Your Spirit would guide and direct them in their thoughts, in their actions, and in their words, that they might be great beacons of light and hope unto all those that they come into contact with, and that as they depart, those left behind would have a greater understanding of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Heavenly Father, we know that there are many things that could come upon them. We ask protection from all these things, but we ask a special blessing from this virus. And that as they go forth to and from, that their families at home would be wrapped in your arms of comfort, would be filled with reassurance that they are being cared for, that they are being watched over, and that you have the situation well in hand. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, one of these men who is uh, going forth is asked for a special blessing, and so... Uh, June, if you would come and turn one of these chairs around, please. And uh, uh, James uh, and George, uh, Sean, if you would go down and uh, take the, the chair. Jim, yeah.
Is there anyone else that would like to be administering to this morning at this point? And I'd like to greet you in the very precious and sacred name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. A call of worship is uh, placed on the uh, front of your bulletin. It's uh, coming from the third uh, book of Nephi uh, in the eighth uh, chapter and it came to pass that Jesus commanded his disciples that they should bring forth bread and wine unto him the scripture goes on to tell us that Jesus took that bread and wine 
and he blessed it. And it was to be a reminder and placed in his church as one of the very precious ordinances that uh, we would remember the sacrifice that he made for each and every one of us. And that we were to do this often. That we would be able to come and remember the covenant that we have made in the waters of baptism with our Heavenly Father. And it is such a precious ordinance that we can reflect on what is in our lives that we need to remove and be better, better disciples for Jesus Christ. Let's continue our service with the use of hymn number 34. We'll stand to sing this hymn. When you find your places, please stand. God, the Eternal Father, and the very precious and sacred name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who willingly went to the cross for each and every one of us, sacrificing himself that we might have a hope of life beyond this life, this life of probation in which God desires us to draw nigh unto him, to keep the commandments, the ordinances, and the doctrines which Jesus placed in his church has been restored in these latter days for the benefit of those that would come to the house of the Lord. And so, Heavenly Father, we continue to lift up our voices, our hearts, our souls in praise to thee, for what you have offered to us and what is ours for the taking. 
We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with our brother Brian as he breaks the bread of life to us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with each and every soul that is gathered here to the house of the Lord today to remember the covenant they have made with you in the waters of baptism, that they would reflect and have a renewed desire to serve you with all their might, mind, and strength. And we pray this as always in the very precious and sacred name of our Lord and Savior, even Jesus the Christ. Amen. Last uh, week I was in Arizona, share with the saints there, and Brother Russ called me on Monday to ask that I would uh, share with you today before we partake of the sacrament. And as I had the wonderful privilege of riding on an airplane three hours coming home, I took that opportunity to do some preparing for today's service. And the neat thing was is that uh, probably at least 75%, if not more, was given to me on that trip home. And so I, I wish to share with you today as a servant of the Lord Jesus, not as one who has arrived or attained or has any special knowledge, but simply one that tries and wishes this day to share with you those things that the Lord would uh, also share with you today. And so today I primarily have two passages of Scripture to share with you. One from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'd like to... Uh, Set the stage for you, if you will. We have a tendency sometimes as people, and it doesn't matter if it's church or in our families or whatever, tend to look backwards and think about how much better things were in this day. How much better things were when the church was all together. How much better was it in the New Testament church after Jesus was here and established the church well, you know what, brothers and sisters, in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, there were problems in the church, even shortly after Jesus left. There was disputations. There were arguments in the church over whether your hair should be long or whether it should be short. How a woman should be. There were disputations over the sacrament. You see, quite often what, what was happening in these times, they would have small church services, and then they would come together as a larger body for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. There was those that would come together at that time, and they would think it was time to eat. It was time for a meal, time to even get drunken. There was all kinds of things that was happening and the Apostle Paul, I'd like to start in verse 18. It says, first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I partly believe it. For there must also be divisions among you, that they which are approved may be manifest among you. When you come together into one place, is it not to eat the Lord's Supper? But in eating, every one taketh before his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall they say to you? 
Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Do you realize sometimes we have a tendency to separate people into classes? And we separate even the righteous and the wicked. And we even have a tendency to do that amongst our own people. Do you realize that Jesus even served sacrament to Judas? Knowing exactly what was going to happen, he served sacrament to Judas who was going to leave that very place and betray him. Let's go to verse 25. Before I read this verse, I want to tell you, you know, we have many different kinds of services that we all share in. We have baptismal service, we have sacrament service, we have preaching service, we have prayer and testimony service. So many different services, but this particular service, I believe, is one of the most personal services. This is an opportunity between you and God. Sure, we have a lot of priesthood up front this morning, more than we usually have, because there's different responsibilities that need to take place of each one being served. But this service today is between you and your Heavenly Father. This service today originated because somebody said that they were willing to die for you. They saw that much worth in you that they said if there was nobody else, they were willing to die for you individually. Verse 25 says, After this same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Quite often we stop there and we think about the unworthy part. And I've sat in many meetings, some even in the last few weeks, not here, where people have felt it is their responsibility as priesthood to have to determine whether or not you are worthy or not. He that drinketh this unworthily shall be guilty. But Scripture goes on in verse 28, and it says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh condemnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And so just as I said, this is a very personal experience, a very personal experience, service between you and your heavenly father your worthiness the scriptures tell us that we as priesthood are not to serve the sacrament to those who are unworthy in the third cha uh, eighth chapter of third nephi fifth chapter isn't it fifth chapter but specifically then he's talking about being baptized and so if you have entered into the covenant of baptism, entered into a covenant with the Lord, and you have made that covenant with Him, then you have become worthy to partake because you have entered into that covenant. However, if there are things that have transpired in your life, that you, as you examine yourself, that you realize that you are not living up to that covenant with the Lord, 
then it's important for you to realize that you need to make some changes in your life. But God is calling you to this personal experience today that even as you and the Holy Ghost work things out at this very moment, I do not know what the Spirit is resting upon you right now and saying. I do not know what person you were as you walked into this building or what person you are as you walk out of this building. But God knows. And He calls you today to commit yourself even in a fuller way, a greater way. Let's go to the 10th chapter of Acts now, if you would, please. And again, to lay a setting here of what was taking place. In the 10th chapter of Acts, there was a good man named Cornelius. I love it in the first or second verse there. It says that he was part of the Italian band. I'd like to know how the Italian band sounds. But uh, he, was, he was not a Jew. And God sent an angel to come and to share with him. Now you're going to see as you read the scripture, there's different hours of the day. I like to understand where I put myself in there. And it says if it's in the ninth hour of the day, the Jews had two, day, two time periods, a day period and a night period. Both consisted of 12 hours. The night was broke up into four watches, three hours each. So if you see some, something where Jesus was walking on the water, he came in the fourth watch of the night. It means he was probably sometime between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning. Time started over at six o'clock in the morning. Where in this scripture here, when we read it, it was in the sixth hour of the day. It meant that it was at noontime, six o'clock, six hours. And so Cornelius ends up having his angel come to him and tell him different things and tells him specifically that he needed to go to find this Peter and Peter would tell him what needed to take place in his life. There was a problem though. This man was a, a Gentile. He was not a Jew. It was unlawful for him to go into his home, to talk to him, to associate with him. Because he was not a Jew. Let's begin at the 10th verse. And he became, this is speaking of Peter. He became very hungry. This was at noontime. This is a verse right before it, 6th hour. He came very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready... He fell into a trance, and he saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descended unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beast of the earth, and wild beast, and creeping things, and fowls of the air, and there came a voice to him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not common. You can imagine the various laws that he had to live by. Certain foods that he can eat and not eat. And here he descends, he sees in this trance or this vision, this sheet let down full of all these various animals. Now was God really trying to tell him, it's okay Peter, go eat pork, or it's okay for you to eat this creeping thing that sneaks across the ground? Was there something greater that he was trying to teach Peter here? In verse 20, because see, Peter, after he had this experience, he was pondering it. He was confused. He was wondering what exactly what did this experience mean. And he said in verse 20, it says, Arise, 
Therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Meaning to the, the Cornelius had sent some people to come to see Peter. And they were downstairs waiting for him. And so the Lord told him that he needed to go with them because the Lord had sent them. I want to read for you starting at verse 23. And I can bear testimony to you that this has literally happened in my life. And I know there are many missionaries here in, in this room that have experienced the same thing. Then called he them and, he, and called them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And on the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were together with them. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come into one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. We have a tendency, brothers and sisters, to separate into common and unclean and those that are righteous. We have a tendency to associate. Maybe we don't have a written law, but we sure seem to make some laws sometimes. I remember there was a time in Uganda where the young ladies especially would show such humility and as you're walking down a trail and they'll come to greet you and they kneel and they hold your hand and touch you. And it struggled with that to begin with. But the key here in this verse was is that Cornelius was worshiping Peter. These young ladies were not worshiping us. They were showing their humility and they were showing respect. We have a verse 29 says, Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent, for I asked therefore, for what intent have you sent for me? And I believe the same question the Lord would ask of you. What is it? Why did you sin for me? Remember Cornelius here, he had this experience. He was told to go get sin for Peter. And Peter brings all these people and he brings them into their home. And he says, now what is it that you want me to do? And again, in this very, very personal service, the Lord would extend that same invitation to you to ask of you, what is it that you want him to do for you? You see, there were, were disputations in the early church. There was disputations even as the apostles would say, who is the greatest among us? And what did Jesus do over and over? He was having to deal with this same problem over and over again. Remember one time he had to bring a child. He brings a child down in front of him. He says, of such is the kingdom. <clears throat> Remember another time, they're talking among themselves. Who's the greatest among us? In fact, they were afraid to even share what their thoughts were because they knew that the Lord was upset with them. Who is the greatest among us? And he took a towel and wrapped it around himself. 
and he started washing their feet. Who is the greatest? And all those disputations seem to stem right from that right there. And we have a tendency to separate ourselves in these various classes. And I'm going to go to this home, but I'm not going to go to that home. And this priesthood offended me. And that person said something about me. And the reality is what we're really saying to our Heavenly Father who sent His Son to die a gruesome and brutal death is that I'm greater. What matters more? Is it what is most important to you or most important to somebody else? We have this problem. And we have very, very, very good memories. And there are times it doesn't matter if you're a priesthood or non-priesthood, a woman or a man. But we have a tendency to have great memories and once somebody has done something or said something and has offended us, we don't want anything to do with them and we separate ourselves. And all of these things tend to come back to who is the greatest among us. And so brothers and sisters, the Lord calls every one of us to the table, to His table that He prepared for us today. For us to examine ourselves and to recognize within ourselves, not for me to point out to you or you to point out to me, but to examine ourselves. And if we have allowed this kind of pride and arrogance or any other thing to separate us from Him and from each other, He's called us to repentance. He's called us to oneness. A oneness with Him. Closing scripture I will share with you for you to consider as we go forward. The hastening time is here. And greater unity than ever before is necessary if the forces of opposition are to be met. And such unity will prevail. This is so important because there has been times whenever we throw up our hands and we say, how are we ever going to come together? You remember Brother Gurley in 1853, he went to bed after conference and he asked that God would take his life. There is no hope just take my life. And we wonder, well, how is it that God can bring all of this mess together? And it can begin right here at this table today. And then it can go to this. Such unity will prevail if those holding the priesthood will remember their commission to preach the gospel. And each officer strive to discharge his own duty and magnify his own calling. We come before the table of the Lord today. And brothers and sisters, the Lord has called me to lay down all of those other things and to remember this. To remember Him. Remember Him. I did not come to this church today to think about any of you or to worship you. I came this day to remember Him and what He did for me. Don't misunderstand what I just said. I love each and every one of you and I care for you so deeply. But this today is between me and God. This today 
is between you and God. And I don't care what somebody did or what somebody said or how your feelings were hurt or what somebody didn't do to help you. Jesus. Jesus. He went to the cross alone. Everybody betraying Him. Everybody, oh no, I don't know Him. And just a very, very few were at the foot of the cross to see the drips of blood that came from Him. Today, this is between you and Him. Settle this in your mind. You and Him. Become one with Him. And all this other stuff will work itself out. Remember what you've been called to, brothers and sisters. Let us all go fulfilling our responsibilities, preaching the gospel, staying out of the spiritual cul-de-sacs that have no exit. Let us preach the gospel and remember this Jesus. May God bless you. Amen. 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 All I can say. Let's turn to hymn number 268 in our purple hymnals. We'll remain seated singing this as the priesthood prepares the emblems for us.
blessing is asked upon the bread, we're invited to kneel as much as we are humanly possible while uh, the uh, prayers ask upon the, the bread. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them, to be with them. Amen.
Has any missed their portion of the bread? While the blessing is asked upon the wine, we're again invited to kneel as much as we're humanly possible. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto Thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, and they may have His Spirit to be with them. Amen.
Has any missed their portion of the wine? And would the priesthood please recover the emblems? In the offertory, I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you if you trust God. Sometimes we, uh, we hold back offerings from the Lord because we're not sure how we're going to pay the bills. Where's the money going to come from for fixing the car or taking care of this bill or that bill. But it's been uh, my experience with my wife that if we pay the Lord first, He takes care of the rest. And He's been faithful in that. So I testify to you that if you will put the Lord first in your finances, that he'll take care of you. If you put the Lord first in your spiritual life, he'll take care of you. Everything is his anyway. Would you bow with me? Oh God, our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we... Uh, Pray for this, your congregation, that as they give, that they might be blessed. As they desire to give, they might be blessed. Your kingdom might be made alive in them, and that they might give their all to you, their trust, their love, their very lives. that all would be done according to your will in this place, even as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
you bow with me our loving Heavenly Father today we have heard about this Jesus and we have partaken of these sacraments in remembrance of Jesus and in these times I cannot help but remember the power of Jesus in my life and the change that has come to me in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray for this people this day that each and every one of us will experience that power of Jesus Christ in our lives to bring about the changes in our lives that are needed. And when those changes came to me, Father, I didn't even recognize that I needed them. But that didn't stop the power that resides in the name and the belief in Jesus Christ. And so I pray a blessing upon this people today. That that name will be upon their heart and minds. That his power will reside within them. Within their lives as they go forth here today. May he always be in remembrance is my prayer for this people. And I ask this blessing upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
everything. I whispered to, to Brian I couldn't have asked for a better piece of music as leading into a pastoral prayer. That was beautiful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All good things must come to an end. It's been a good, good worship experience. Let's turn to hymn number 58. Once more before we part, let's bless the Savior's name. We'll stand to uh, sing this hymn and I'll offer our final prayer. <coughs> Awesome God, all we can offer up to you is thanks for this uh, special, special hour that we have spent with you. Thank you so much for the challenge that you uh, gave us. Thank you for this ordinance that your son placed in his church, that we could remember him Remember his sacrifice for us, and remember the covenant that we made with you. And I too would ask a blessing upon this people as we uh, have worshiped together in our church home this day. I pray, Heavenly Father, that each soul has been touched as mine has been as we go forth into the world. I pray this in the very precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated.